Justin here. Today we are checking out I Feel Good by James Brown. In the house, this is a cracking song. Really, really good fun. Now, the first reason I was teaching this song was to try and explain how important space is. Because the original guitar part doesn't do a whole lot, okay? And then I thought, well, actually, probably people are going to want to know how to play the little riff. And I used to play it in a band, and, and it's good fun. Uh, I could show you a little way of kind of copying the horn riff, which we're going to be checking out as well. But to start off with, I want to explain what's going on on the original recording, because it's really cool. So the guitar part on the original recording is very sparse, just two notes and not even played very often. But it's actually perfect for the song and it's important to realise, particularly in a big band where you've got a horn section and stuff, you don't want to be playing all the time because you're just going to get in the way. So the original recording, all of this <laughs> is kind of copying the bass line and the horn section. The guitar goes, I feel good, two, three, four, one. D, I'm not even sure about that arpeggio at the end. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt, and I think it's in there. But literally, that's it. Okay, one more time. So it's going from the beginning. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, 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 and one. Let's go through that one bar at a time. So the first bar, there's nothing. The second bar, we've got the tenth fret thinnest two strings on beat two. So one, two, three, four. The third bar, there's nothing. In the fourth bar, we've got the same thing. One, two, three, four. And that's it. Nice, short, sharp little chord. In bar five, we've got nothing. In bar six, we've got the third fret thinnest two strings. One, two, three, four. And then in the sixth bar, we got nothing. In the seventh bar, we've got our tenth fret on the uh, thinnest two strings again. One, two, three, four. Okay? Last four bars, we've got an A7 happening on beats two and three. It's a very small grip of an A7 as well. We don't want any big chunky bar chord stuff here. This is just the uh, seventh fret on the fourth string, sixth fret on the third string, and eighth fret on the second string. I'm using second finger, first finger, fourth finger there. Okay, it's a nice way of kind of. You can see I can strum all of the strings because thumb can mute the thicker string, tip of second finger can mute the fifth string, little finger underneath can mute the thinner string. So just got those three notes ringing out, but I can strum all of the chords, okay? So or, or all of the strings rather. Um, so it's doing that A7 chord on just on beats two and three. So one, two, three, four. Then it moves it down two frets to the G, same rhythm pattern. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then we've got this little D9 arpeggio, which is going to be the 10th fret of the thicker string, 9th fret of the 5th string, and then to the 12th fret, then 10th fret of the 4th string, 9th fret of the 3rd string, on the off beat, so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2, 3, 4. That's 10th fret on the thicker string, on to the 5th string, 9th fret, 12th fret, then 10th fret on the 4th string, 9th fret on the 3rd string. So let me take that verse sequence right the way through now, now that you know what the chords are being played and where the notes are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 
four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, three, four. Okay, that's the verses all of the way through. What's played on the record? Have a listen to it. It's a really big deal to, to understand the importance of space, and sometimes just not playing is better than trying to play all the time. In the B section, uh, there's a saxophone line doing this. It's just a lovely line on guitar anyway, so uh, I'll show, let me show you that. It's uh, fifth fret on the fifth string, then seventh fret on the third string, fifth fret, then seventh fret on the fourth string, back to the fifth fret on the third string, back to seventh fret on the fourth string, and then a little kind of a curl on the eighth fret of the fifth string. So three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four. Okay? Picking doesn't really matter. Whatever you feel comfortable, you're, you're copying a saxophone line, so there's not really a specific fingering for that little part. Um, then the guitar goes into playing fours, nice tight fours. So uh, we're just playing now on the G chord, fourth fret, third fret, third fret, on the thinnest three strings, and we're going to be doing... So just pressing down with the fingers as we play the chord and relaxing them right away. I'm letting third finger kind of just lean over and touch the thinnest, the thicker strings rather, to, to make sure that they don't ring out accidentally. To, you know, I'm, I'm only aiming with my pick for the thinnest three strings, but you know, it's quite likely, especially if I'm getting into the heat, heat of it and really feeling it, that I might accidentally hit those thicker strings. So third finger touching those strings there is just a bit of insurance. So playing four is just one, two, three, four, one, two, so it's two bars and then up to the D, which is the 10th fret. So 11, 10, 10. Same thing again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to G for two bars. Then A. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. And then we're back into the verse again. Okay, so the A chord is just the same as the G moved up two frets. Okay. Nothing difficult going on there at all, okay? So let's have a little chat now about introducing this other idea of, of mixing up in the, uh, mixing the bass line in as well with the chords. Uh, that might be easier in a close up, so let's do that. sounding riff isn't it so we're playing the bass note which is the note D on beat one then I'm using this little ninth chord okay which is just the tenth fret ninth fret tenth fret on strings four three and two and I'm strumming it and then sliding it back okay one two and three and four and one Okay, then we've got this little bass line. Tenth fret on the thicker string, twelfth fret on the fourth string, tenth fret, twelfth fret on the fifth string, and then we're back. So the second time we finish there on the note G, and we're actually going to move the riff all of the way down to the third fret too, that little chord. But we've got to change the ending of it again to get back onto our D note, so. Third fret, fifth fret, finishing on the note D because the rest of the bands move to a D chord, okay? And then we'd have that riff again. Okay, and this time when we go back to the D, we've got that riff again going the 10th fret to 12th fret, because this time we want to finish on the A note. Let me do it once through nice and slowly so you can see all of that. So here's the riff. Bass. Finishing on D. Finishing on G now. There. Three, 
5, back to D, 10, 12, okay, because we want the A chord, then we've got the original A7 chord from the, you know, the authentic version, move that down two frets for the G, and then that arpeggio, 10, 9, 12, 10, 9, making sure that you keep those notes nice and short. Okay, you can either use muting with the fretting hand, or just making sure that you press with the note when you want it to sound, and then lift the finger off to keep it nice and tight. Okay, and while we're on the close-up, just in case you missed it before, the little riff there, fifth fret on the fifth string, seventh fret, uh, fifth fret, seventh fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, eighth fret on the fifth string, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four. I hope you have a lot of fun playing this tune. It's really important that you check out the space on the original recording. I really can't emphasize that enough, how important it is to listen to great funk records and notice how much space there is around the guitar. And don't feel like you have to play all the time. Right? Sometimes less is more, and leaving a lot of space around you for the other instruments to do their thing makes it, the band sound better. You know, and to the listener, the, they want the band to sound good, not for the guitar player to be you know, playing all over the top of everything else. So it's a big deal. Also though, having fun with this kind of arrangement, you know, and learning the horn lines can be a really cool thing to get into doing, you know, you don't, don't have to do it my way, I've just kind of figured out a way of trying to play kind of the bass line and kind of the horns together into a guitar arrangement, right? Doing that kind of thing is a really good learning process for you to be doing yourself as well, to pick another James Brown song that you like or any, any other song that, that, you know, a piano song and trying to work it out on guitar. That, that kind of stuff is really good for your ears, you know, to, to be listening because you're not always thinking about shapes and regular guitar things, you know, it takes, it, takes you playing to a slightly different, different space. So, um, have fun with that. Oh, one last thing I was going to mention is the ending. The very ending of the song's got the little arpeggio. But then it just goes down the minor pentatonic scale. Then down minor pentatonic from the D. And then a D9 chord there to, to finish off with a little, what they call a scramble, where you just strum the chord as fast as you can. So that's the very ending of that song, and I think that's about as comprehensive look as at I feel good as you could possibly want for, for your guitar playing. Remember, of course, all of this funk stuff, the really big deal is locking into the groove, so make sure that when you're playing and when you're practicing along that you're really trying to, to play at exactly the same time as the other instruments. And, you know, playing along with this, even just getting that single, single, <laughs> single, simple, strum there on, on uh, beat two, you know, just a little chip there. That's a, that's a pretty big deal, you know, to make sure that you get, if you're doing something that simple, you've got to get it exactly right. So when you're practicing along and playing along, make sure that you can get it. Ching, three, four, one, two, three, four, ching. You know, really listen to the rest of the band so that you're playing it at exactly the same time as anyone else in the band is playing on that note, okay? Really, really, really big deal. So I really hope you dig playing this tune. Please subscribe if you like what I do and check out the website for lots more information, help on this song and funk techniques. Generally, there's loads of information there. So I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.